Hello everybody, my name is Jennifer Maker. Welcome to The Great Maker Show and Tell. Today we are embellishing tote bags with layered iron-on vinyl. I'm going to show you how to do this using a Cricut to cut out the vinyl and a Cricut Easy Press to iron it onto your tote bag. And if you've been following me for any length of time, you know what a big Cricut fan girl I am. I got my very first Cricut nearly two years ago and it is not an exaggeration to say that it changed my life. Which is why I am super pleased to announce that for this video, I am working with Cricut. Yes, this video is sponsored by Cricut, who graciously sent me some iron-on vinyl for today's project. Isn't that awesome? Okay, so now tote bags are so easy to personalize thanks to the Cricut. And they make great gifts too. So these are... the these reversible pleather bags that you can get in many stores these days are perfect because they look classy and yet they're inexpensive. You can get them for anywhere between like 10 to $30. I got this one from Walmart for $14. And because they're reversible, you can put something on both the inside and the outside um, for a little versatility, right? So for example, you can have a serious work side and a playful fun side. And that's exactly what we're going to do today. I am going to show you how you can make a simple layered iron-on design for your serious side. And then we're going to turn it inside out and we're going to make a more complex layered iron-on for your crafty, playful side. And we're going to do it using the new Easy Press 2. In fact, I just bought this big 12 inch by 10 inch Easy Press 2 and I haven't even unboxed it yet. So I thought we'd unbox it together, plug it in, and we'll see how easy it is to get started right out of the box. And I've also created two designs for the tote bag. You're welcome to use the designs for your own tote bags, of course, and you'll find them on my blog at jennifermaker.com. So head on over to my blog, get the files, and then let's go to Cricut Design Space to cut out the vinyl. So you can get the tote bag designs over at jennifermaker.com. You find them in my free resource library, and you can get a password to it by signing up for free if you haven't already done that. So download that zip file and open it up, and then head on over to Cricut Design Space. So at Cricut Design Space, click New Project, then click Upload, Upload Image, and Browse. And then you'll want to find the SVG file of the design that you want to make. I'm going to put both of them in so that you can see that process. So uh, once you've uploaded, you just click Save. And uh, we're going to put the other one in. You can put both files in on the same canvas. And then we select both and do insert images. So here they are. And there's really nothing that you have to prepare for these at all, unless you want to resize them. That's it. Just click make it and design space will separate everything out into the match you need, but you have to mirror. This is super important. Don't forget to mirror. Just click each layer and click the little toggle next to mirror on. This is important because iron on vinyl gets cut face down, right? So we have to have all of our words in a mirror image in order for it to actually work. People tend to forget to mirror. So this is, so that's why I'm making a big deal about it. I myself forgot to mirror um, on one of my layers when I was cutting this. You'll notice right now I'm just sort of moving things around on my, my map preview because it makes it just a little bit easier to weed and cut later. So when you're ready, click continue and then select your Cricut. and you'll want to choose the right kind of iron-on vinyl. I'm using Everyday, Cricut Everyday Iron-On. Um, so if that's what you're using, you'll want to use that as well. I really don't recommend that you use glitter iron-on for any kind of layered iron-on designs because it doesn't stick to itself. Now let's talk about iron-on vinyl. Iron-on vinyl has actually two parts to it. One side is the vinyl itself, and the other is a carrier sheet, which is a clear see-through plastic layer that you can't really see when you're first looking at it like this. But the way that you recognize it is the carrier sheet is this shiny side, and the iron-on vinyl itself is the duller side. So when you cut your iron-on vinyl, you want to put it face down so that your shiny side 
your carrier side is against the mat. And your binal itself is, is um, the one that is actually being cut. So this that you see right here, this is face up. This is the shiny side, right? You can, uh, you can see it and if it comes off a roll, it has this curve to it that, you know, conforms to the roll. This is the opposite side. This is not the shiny side and you can see it looks a little duller. Sometimes it's white and sometimes it's the same color as the vinyl. So you really want to look for the shininess of it. Um, that's the best way to tell whether, you know, which side is which. All right, so here we have my Cricut and I've put my vinyl shiny side down on my mat. Always double check this because you don't want to waste vinyl and have to cut it out again. And then there's nothing special besides this. You just cut it out just like you normally would cut out anything else. I'm using my fine point blade for this. Okay, so here is a piece of my cut vinyl and I want to show you a trick that I figured out. So I have the hardest time getting the vinyl to separate from the carrier sheet, right? It just, it just doesn't want to do it. In the past, I have spent so long. So this is my trick. Take a knife and on the iron on vinyl side, you cut a small diagonal strip just in the corner and then you can fold it and then you can peel up your vinyl. Right, so it's similar to like the back of a adhesive sheet of paper, like a sticker paper that's got the pre-cut lines in it. Um, and so that, that lets you peel it up so much easier. And I speak from experience because I cut a lot of vinyl for this project. <laughs> so yeah, just, just make sure you're not cutting into your design when you put that little, that little um, cut there. And then be sure to cut it off too before you actually put your design onto your project. There we go. So we need to uh, weed the rest of our layers. This design is not difficult, really. It's not difficult to weed. Just make sure you're getting all the little bits and everything and that you're keeping them off your work surface as much as possible so they don't want to like, you know, stick onto your carrier sheets. And then you'll want to cut each of the individual words and letters out. So the words that are together get cut out together. And then the, like the craft letters, they get cut out separately. All right. Okay, so let's unbox this brand new Cricut Easy Press. So this cute little uh, Cricut vinyl design was at the top. I'm guessing that is for our sample project. And there's an envelope with instructions and a little manual, a quick start guide and all that sort of thing, which is helpful and my license number. And then in the box itself, which is really well packaged, is the, the mat, um, really it's not a mat, it's a tray, the heat protective tray. And then the easy press itself in a uh, canvas bag and the power cord. So cool. So it's a little drawstring bag. And there it is. Cord. Let's take off the plastic. It's all shrink wrapped. And cut off that extra little warning tag on the label on the power cord. Um, put it in its tray. We're going to plug this in. So the quick start guide walks you through doing the very first project with the drawstring bag. We're not going, normally I would do this, but we're not going to do this. We're going to skip right to our project today so I can get this done for you. Normally, I absolutely recommend that you do the starter projects. I already have an easy press, however, so I'm going to skip over this part. Now, I checked online the, in the interactive quick reference guide to see what temperature and uh, how long I should do a faux leather project. So we're going to start there and we'll work up, you know, in temperature down as, as our needs, um, as, as it goes. That's generally how I do this. I start with what Cricut recommends. And then if it turns out my material needs a little something different because every material is different, then I adjust as we go. So to set your temperature, you just click the temperature button and then click the up and down arrows and then click the temperature again. And the same for the timer. Click the timer button, 
click the up and down buttons to change the timer and then click the timer button again and then that's it. All right, so here's our black tote bag. I have filled it full of paper pads to keep a nice firm surface and raise everything up. Now, one tip that I wanna give you is to turn your Cricut Easy Press around, especially this big one, so that your cord doesn't get in your way, right? Uh, set your temperature. We're gonna set our temperature to 300 degrees for 30 seconds. And we're gonna to wanna to preheat our, our faux leather tote bag first. Uh, preheating it really makes a difference, I found, in getting the vinyl to stick. Um, and Cricut does recommend that as well. So let's go ahead and just heat up the surface. We're just gonna use the... And then this is our design. So it's a gold M and a silver maker. So we position our first layer, which is the M, on our tote bag. We cover it up with a protective sheet and then we press it for 30 seconds. And I'm applying firm pressure. Um, and when it's done, you want to just lift up the corner and see if it's adhered. If it hasn't, put that sheet back on again and do it again. And you just go in little bits. The, you know, 300 degrees is not a particularly high temperature. We're doing that so that we don't melt or hurt our faux leather bag. So again, we check it. If it's not good enough, we just try it again. I took, you know, about three or four passes to get it to work. I went slow. I did this, you know, I didn't want to increase the temperature. If we go too hot, you can, you know, not only hurt your surface, but you can make it so that your vinyl doesn't stick at all. So you have to find the sweet spot. So we're going to do it one more time. We want that vinyl to be really well adhered. If you try to force it, it will probably rip right off and create a giant mess. So just keep doing this short bursts until you get it. So remember to do, very gently peel the corner off and it's now good. So it took five passes to get that to adhere, but it did. So now we layer our next layer of vinyl, which is the maker and um, press that down. And again, we're going to uh, just keep going. Once that vinyl is adhered, it's okay to go ahead and put another layer on. It's not going to hurt it or anything. So gently pull up the corner and pull it off. If it, at any point it seems to come off, put that carrier sheet back down and try again. But hey, it didn't, and we have now layered vinyl. This is a really simple, easy design that anybody can do, and it looks really cute too. All right, so let's take out these pads of paper and turn our bag inside out so we can do the other side with the more complex layered design. All right, so we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna put our, these pads of paper back in we still want that nice firm surface. So this is the other side of that tote bag, the reversible tote bag. And our first layer will be this big black layer. And this is where the new big easy press is gonna come in so handy because this black layer is wider than the original easy press that I also have is. We'll get all of our letters in order. Now remember to preheat the surface of your tote bag cover it up with your pillowcase or your protective sheet or whatever you're using. Keep clear of those straps at the top. And I love how it fits right on this tote bag. It's just the right size for it. And I'm just preheating it for 300 degrees for 30 seconds. All right, so now we're gonna put our black layer on, make sure it's on the surface, centered, straight, you know, all that jazz. Press it down. Cover it with your protective sheet. And press it down with your easy press. And apply it, you're applying firm pressure. Generally that means your arms shake a little bit, you know, when you're pressing down. That's what that's what firm pressure means to me, and that's how I did it. Alright, so now we check the corner to see if it's coming off, which it appears to be, so we try it again. We press one more time. And we basically, we just keep pressing and checking until our vinyl is completely adhered. And there we go, it looks like it's all stuck down this time. Just go nice and slow, because if you encounter a problem, you're gonna wanna cover that back up and try again, which I did. All 
All right, so here is our black layer, all, all adhered and ready for our next layer. So our next layer for this design is going to be the, um, the words and the letters that have the colors. So it's important that we don't let the carrier sheets and vinyl touch each other. So you see me here trimming each of the words. That's, that is so that, you know, we're not putting, you know, vinyl on top of a carrier sheet. So this is like all I, I have to get the carrier sheet trimmed more at the bottom. So that when I put the next word on, it's free and clear of the one above it. So you can do multiple layers like this so long as they're not touching each other, right? But once they're touching each other, you have to go one pass at a time. But I want to save some time, so I'm putting the all of my colors on for the letters and the words at once. Anything anything that's uh you know in the same layer I can do. And then it's important that when we do these letters, we're only doing the colored letters, not the designs on top, because that's definitely a separate layer and that would be, you know, two layers touching. So for, for craft, you're just doing the, um, the solid colors. And again, I'm trimming each of the letters to make sure they don't touch each other. I mean, the carrier sheets can, you know, overlap a little bit, just not the vinyl and the carrier sheets, unless the vinyl is under a carrier sheet, right? So just be mindful of that. And if, you know, if you're in doubt, you could just do these one at a time, but it would take a lot longer. So I don't recommend that. Also, the more that we, you know, press this faux leather tote bag, the more likely we are to damage it. I mean, it's just plastic. So you want to minimize that as much as possible. Though I want to note, I actually saw no damage whatsoever to this faux leather bag the entire time I was doing this. It seemed just fine at 300 degrees. So once everything is in place, I'm going to cover it up with a protective sheet and then press it. Apply firm pressure. And then check it. At this point, you know, your, your vinyl will at least be sticking and not popping up. <laughs> Uh, but very carefully check each of these layers, just like before. If they don't appear to be adhering, cover it back up, press it again. And there we go. It looks like two passes did it. I really thought that this would be the hard part, but this was actually the easier part. I think that uh, it was just really hard to stick the vinyl to the faux leather. And it, I mean, and the leather is textured too to start. So it's textured and it's like plastic. But once we got that first layer down, it actually was really quite easy after that because then we were just sticking vinyl to vinyl. Um, so just something to keep in mind. Your surface really makes a difference when it comes to uh, applying vinyl. And I chose a challenging surface. <laughs> But it's so cute. I mean, you know, it looks so great. <laughs> and there we go. All right, so now we put our little designs on each of the craft letters at the bottom. So, you know, these will be a little bit fiddly. You have to make sure you got them centered and straightened and all that. But it wasn't it wasn't anything too difficult, really. You just pay attention to where the lines are falling. So, like, on, this, on the green stripes, uh, the carrier sheet doesn't really want to stick down very well. And that can happen. If that happens, you know, just really, really do your best to press down on it. But if it still wants to pop up like mine is, just save it for later and then do it as the last one so that you can kind of hold it in place as you place your protective sheet on it, which will help keep it in place. All my other letters seem to stick okay, though. A lot of it has to do with how much carrier sheet you have. That's the only sticky part. Your vinyl itself isn't sticky. So if you trim away too much of your carrier sheet, it doesn't want to stick so well. So there's something to keep in mind also. Don't trim too much of that away if you can help it. You know, at least leave the parts that you can leave, leave those. The parts that are off to the side or descend, and as long as they're not covering up any other piece that you're trying to apply at the same time, um, it's not an issue to have that carrier sheet there. All right, and then we're going to do that R as the last step so that we can put our sheet right on top of it and hold it in place, and that will help keep it down. So see, I'm keeping my hand over it, and 
then I'm just going to put it right on top there. Put the easy press right on top there. And uh, that will help keep it down. And then once you know it has some heat, it will want to stick because the vinyl will start to melt. All right, let's check and see how it did. Looks like it needs one more pass at least. Those little dots. Oh, there we go. So that looks like it needed two passes for those letters there. And we'll do that one just, there's this one little dot on the edge there because sometimes it's hard to get right to the edge, um, you know, because there, it's just a little bit folded. But I got it off. And then we're going to do, and I could have done my Jennifer Maker at the same time I did the other letters, but I decided to do it just on its own, just so I could concentrate on those those little designs, especially since I had that one that was popping up. Took all the wrinkles out. Make sure everything is in place. Just double check it if you have to. And then press it. Again, I'm applying firm pressure. I'm not putting all my weight on it. It just means that I'm putting, you know, some pressure on it as I, you know, as I uh, press my design. And then gently peel off the carrier sheet. And we did it. Yay. <laughs> I'm super happy with this design too. I love how colorful it is and bold and fun. I'm looking forward to using this bag. So here are my tote bags, hot off the press. Get it? Hot off the press? Easy press? <laughs> yeah, that was pretty bad, I know. Okay, so it turns out the hardest part of making the tote bags was the first layer, not the subsequent layers, as I thought it would be. Getting vinyl to stick to faux leather is a challenge, and if you and you have to go slow and check to see if the vinyl is adhering, as you saw in the video, right? They look great, and I'm really happy with the results, but it took longer than I thought it would because of the difficult material. So, if you're thinking of making a tote bag and it's your first project or two, I'd recommend you try putting vinyl on a canvas bag first. They are so much easier to work with when it comes to vinyl. I never have any problems with my vinyl bags, or with my canvas bags. Okay, so it was actually really nice to have the big uh, Cricut Easy Press for this project as I could cover the entire design in one pass. And I know that cut down on my make time in a major way. And I'm really happy with how they turned out. I love this design. And you may notice that I have two bags. I bought two and a second is a backup. And just in case anything went wrong, because sometimes that go, things go wrong, right? And I decided, what the heck, let's just put the monogram on the second backup bag, and then I would have a, both of them without having to turn them inside out. Okay, so if you make a tote bag using my designs, please share your photos in our Facebook group or go to, or put them on social media with hashtag maker show and tell. So tomorrow we're switching back to paper, and I am going to show you how to make an ex an exploding card. This is a huge big requested project. Don't forget to send your project ideas. We have lots and lots of more time to get ideas and make things together. And remember, if you can tell me what you want to make, I can show you how to make it. Until tomorrow. Mm -hmm.